This is the Marketing Umbrella Podcast, where it's all about getting the information you need from successful leading marketers to build and grow your digital marketing agency. Brought to you by Itumar Shafir, founder and CEO of Umbrella, the technology platform and brand that is powering thousands of marketing agencies around the country. Find him at UmbrellaUS.com. Now, here's your host, Kevin Pruitt. Welcome to another episode of the Marketing Umbrella Podcast, where we try to talk to marketing experts so agency owners can grow and scale their business. And we have another great guest on the podcast today. He manages the team at Media Authentic, where they provide actionable data management from marketing to fulfillment. The goal is to allow businesses to stop worrying about the data and start taking action based on real world insights. At the same time, Data Studio. VIP is where he shares expertise and tools to teams to start making more money using Google Data Studio. It is my pleasure to welcome from the beautiful northwest of the country, JJ Reynolds of Media Authentic. JJ, thanks for joining us on the Marketing Umbrella Podcast. Hey, thank you so much. It's going to be hopefully a good time. I am, I've I've got a great list of questions here that I I kind of want to pick your brain on, and uh, I've been working on them even more this morning, but. Uh, I just want everyone to know JJ has dragged himself out of bed at 6 a.m. to uh, talk to us this morning. So he he says he's an early morning person. I hope the copy's kicked in. But uh, man, JJ, thank you for uh, for taking one for the team and and joining so early. Yeah, no, I'm I'm a much more early. Like I'd rather be at 6 a.m. than 6 p.m. Honestly, so I am one of those types of people which some people despise in the world. So <laughs> um, I'm one of those early morning people. Yeah, there is no doubt about it. There's a there's a hilarious meme that has these two dogs that are like in a car looking out the window, and one of them is a morning person, and the other one, you know, you see the head pop up later, and it's you know it's, his hair is all disheveled and stuff like that. So it's uh, yeah, that there there are two types of people in the world for sure. There are for sure. Well, tell us a little bit about Media Authentic. They lay a little more groundwork for us. Yeah, no worries. So um, if you didn't know, my name is JJ. No, uh, so the, the team at Media Authentic we provide data, um, analysis, uh, reporting, and all of those um, externalities that most people like kind of forget about, right, of the reporting that you can actually take an action on uh, for companies. So that is the quick and dirty of it. That entails everything kind of, from kind of front end of like um, setting up really, really deep, deep, complex funnels um, from the acquisition side. So like, say you have a five part sign up and you want to know the drop off at every step or if you have um questions around your content right content marketing um if some companies have huge budgets for kind of that content side of things especially mm -hmm. in the SaaS kind of world but like the answer is always like is it working right? right and then we want to know like what is it supposed to do like what do we build this content for so let's measure it for that aside from obviously ranking on google or ranking on something else or maybe like having a youtube channel let's figure that out so that's what we we do primarily um it spans the entire front end to back end and the goal at the end of the day is like we can get real nerdy talking about like SQL and tag management, and all this crazy stuff. But the goal at the end of the day is to take action on it. Um, and so as we try to coach all of our clients to do is um, action is like better than data, right? If, if you can take an action on it, doesn't matter if it's one number or an entire beautiful dashboard. If you can take action, you're off to the races. I, I think I heard somebody say one day that uh, information without application is just noise. You know, the, the yeah, exactly. whole idea of, uh, you know, we can have all the information in the world, but if you can't act on it, you, you can't implement that that data to to affect change or to improve, then, then it's it's kind of a waste of time. But are you are you primarily focused, um, your service is focused toward marketing agencies or is it direct to client or is it a little combination of both? It's a combination of both. So um I guess I, I kind of left out a bit here. So uh, about 60% of our business is that. And then the other last 40% is building custom tools um, mm. using kind of data as the back end. So custom right. tools for either in-house, like larger companies. So like um, individual companies are like hundreds of millions of dollars. 
um, or uh, agencies who want to kind of replicate something across an entire client yeah. base. Um, if it's if it's kind of replicable, we can usually kind of build out a process and like a pipeline um, to then have a tool that they could use to like, for example, audit an account by just clicking a few buttons or um, maybe a dashboard that you can look at the, the spend across three dozen accounts at the same time, right? Like that's the kind of stuff where it's like, there's no real out of the box tool. Like there's some tools here and there that will try to do it, but we right. can build like a, a very uh, custom depending on your SOPs, how you view the things. Some people have custom metrics that try to like create out of using Facebook and Google and TikTok and divide it by the square root of a thousand or whatever <laughs> their metric is. Exactly. Um, and we can kind of build that in a process so they're not having to bust up the calculator every morning. Now, are these more thinking in terms of dashboards or are these actually the tools that are implementing the processes? Uh, it's dash. So look, let's just uh, take it back. It's from the entire pipeline. So the end result is a dashboard. That's what everyone will interact with. That's what mm -hmm. you kind of view at the end of the day. But the entire process behind that could be like the data collection if, if it's not being collected or um, data migration, for example, if it's something like um, like Facebook ads, it's fairly standard on the reporting side of things, right? There's a purchase, there's an add to cart, there's your click-through rate, there's your link click-through rate, all those kind of standard metrics right. um, that you're not going to like change too much because there's not that much customization for what data you can or cannot send. Um, but then we'll make sure we migrate that to something that works and then build out a custom tool for what we're trying to accomplish. So at the end of the day, back to the action thing, because I can get very caught up in the weeds of things is we want to ask a good question so we can take better actions, right? right? Like that's yeah. at the end of the day, people ask like, how, like if we have, we have a new client, like how can we best work with you? And I'm like, well, ask like our goal is to help you ask better questions every single week, right? So this week you might ask how many people saw the thank you page. And then next week you're like, how many people submitted the form? And the week after that is how many people saw the form, right? Mm. And the week after that is how many people saw the page that the, that the form is on. And the week after that is how many different traffic sources saw that? And what was the efficiency of each traffic source? So like that's how things kind of can start getting more complex over time as we build out a story from all of the different like crazy data that exists in the world. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you hear that a lot in, in kind of marketing world that you have to ask the right questions. You have to ask good questions. And when I, when I hear that, I mean, there are kind of two thoughts I have. One is like, is, there, is this uniquely to the client or are some of these universal questions? I mean, which, what questions are you trying to answer? Are you trying, I mean, are, can you, can you ask, does, does that question kind of make sense? Are these, oh, are these yeah. kind of agnostic questions or are these questions that are truly related only to my business and my situation and that type of thing? The system in general is kind of uh, is universal. So mm -hmm. for example, when I have a journey, not just like, let's just talk about acquisitions to make right. it, make it more, more easy. So like, just think of like, if you have a website, um, for example, if, if you're listening at home, go to like uh, mediaauthentic.com, like M-E-D-I-A-U-T-H-E-N-T-I-C.com. I read it off really fast. <laughs> um, and what you'll see is probably like a, a banner at the top of the website that says there's a GA4 training and migration. GA4, new thing coming out. Everybody's kind of either panicking or head is under the rock. <laughs> and on that page, it's, it's quite long. It's like a long form sales letter with like video and everything else. But what we're measuring for is how many people saw the page, how many people saw it below the fold, mm -hmm. how many right. people then engage with the video, and then how many people uh, clicked the button to book a call. And so if any of those steps has a higher drop off rate than the previous step, we know, okay, the video sucks. Let's reshoot the video and talk more about X, Y, and Z. Let's restructure the offer because everyone's confused about what button to push. Mm -hmm. So it's with those, like, it's it's very, like, we call it um, a journey. So for example, right. impression, aware, engage, um, investigate, and then initiating into something um, is kind of the steps. There's five steps there. Mm -hmm. And so those are universal, but how we decide what the, what, what the definition from a marketing sense is could be very customized for the business. So that's like probably the best example I can give of like 
it's customized, but it's also universal, but it's, it's kind of how you think of it marketing that everyone's like, you have your customer journey. And it's this big ambiguous thing that everybody's like, customer journey, customer journey, let's define it. So then we can improve it. Reiterate those five steps really quickly again in a journey. Yeah. So what we usually do is uh, like take a page mm -hmm. just the, the easy. No, you said five, of, five top, top, top terms really quick. Yeah. So, so what we yeah. do is uh, impression, right? Uh -huh. so want to map that to like the, the think of it correlating to billboards of like, right. you might've seen it, you might've paid attention, you might've not. Yeah. And then you have aware. So we usually map that as 10 seconds. So like, imagine if somebody was like a billboard example, again, if someone read the whole billboard, 10 mm. seconds, they're not aware that like Kaiser Permanente has a billboard on fifth street, right? Like that's aware. And by that time they're bounce, they're not considered bounce. Like with their, if they're on that 10 seconds that there, there's some engagement there. They haven't just immediately bounced, bounced off. They're, they're aware that the offer exists, but they haven't yet engaged. The right. next step would be engaged yep. where we could say maybe it's uh, like 20% scroll and um, 20 seconds on the site. So they've mm -hmm. scrolled at least a little bit down the page. They didn't just load the page and read the, read the above the fold and leave. Yep. So impression, right? Pay, like load up the page, right. aware, 10 seconds. Engage is where we kind of define it a little bit more custom of like how big is the page? Maybe there's a video if it's a VSL. Um, so impression, aware, engage, um, investigate. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's usually where they're like trying to in, find something and then initiate. And so that's where they click to do the thing that you're trying to get them to do. So if it's a product page on e-commerce, it's like clicking add to cart. If it's um, if it's a VSL, it's like clicking apply now, right? There's all right. the different things that you're like um, initiating into. Um, and it's not dollars in the bank, right? Often right. people just like want to go straight to the purchase, straight mm -hmm. to the dollars. But want to think, what is the purpose of this step? So mm -hmm. then we can say, do we get them to the next step? And then... We'll do the same thing on the next step, right? Like is your cart, does your cart suck? Cause it could be that your sales page is freaking awesome. And then your cart just has like a bajillion extra forms about like mm -hmm. what's your mother's maiden name and your social security number. Exactly. And everybody's like, ah, I'm good. This I'm is done. Scam. I'm out. <laughs> That's exactly all. Is, are these measures fairly industry standard or did, is this how you guys define these five steps? I'd say industry industry standard is like a page view. Like no one really like thinks beyond a page view. Mm. Um, or if you're in e-commerce, right? It's like those e-commerce standard things that everyone talks about, right? There's like, like product views and then there's add to carts and then there's right. initiate checkout and all those things. But if you're not an e-commerce store and you're not on like Shopify or something that's like a default plug and play, the, the standard is just page views and purchases. If mm -hmm. that, if you're not, if you're not measuring for these things, they're not being reported. Yeah. And so we can define, like, we just, like, we just use these because like, uh, it's like kind of easy language for most people to understand. You can make up whatever your heart desires as far as like the engagement metrics. But what we want to do is have your, your quote unquote marketing journey that everyone wants to like, tote around as like this thing of like you need to have a journey like let's define that for every page of a website or every page of your marketing so that you know we have a i don't know product details page about our super cool thing why do we have this page and is it working and that definition of is it working those kind of steps make it a lot easier to mm -hmm. understand like the quote unquote is it working so that was a very long with an example. But no, I that absolutely. It's great. It's very, I, very clear. And it, it, it kind of, you know, sparked in my mind, this whole idea that, you know, success is measured in different ways. It's not just dollars in the bank, like you said, I mean, because you have to, and if you're asking the right questions, if you're defining that journey in a specific way to say success, may be that they sign up for my newsletter success, may be that they, you know, that they share this with someone else. I mean, you have to kind of define what that is. I, I, I really appreciate that distinction, but so, so let's talk in terms of like, you talk directly to like marketing agency owners. So if you're, if, if I, you and I are on an elevator and you're talking to me about media authentic, what is the problem that I need solved that media authentic is? I mean, I, it, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that sounds like a, well, duh, we've been talking about this for 10 minutes, but be, be really, you know, kind of granular and say, this is why media authentic is a great solution for an agency yeah so agencies in general usually neglect 
the measurement because it's a cost center, right? It, it costs money to set up and you're not sure if it's going to be a better solution, okay? And just in general, don't even think about us. Don't even like, I don't want, I don't want you to hire us about like making a hard pitch, just like in general, right? Just think in general is we got an agency where you run traffic, build websites, something like that. And any of those things, if you're, if you're a traffic agency, you run, let's just say a Facebook ads agency and you have to set up the, if you don't have all these, all the measurement pieces set up, like you will really suck at running fa Facebook ads. And so what you want to do is you want to try and make your optimization process the best possible. So you're not having to randomly be like, okay, like are the add to carts there? Is there a step that we can do better? Is there all these things? You want to try and take that, be the best at your, at your craft. Okay. So that's kind of one piece. The other piece on this, so it's like one, be better at your craft. So if you're doing something that you are bringing money, right? Like if you're, you're building, um, I don't know, sales funnels and running ads and all of that jazz, you want to be the best at your craft. I hope you do. <laughs> Otherwise, you should get out of the business now. <laughs> um, and the other side of the other side of things is you could possibly add a revenue stream. Okay, so think of it as like if you're a web designer, and you then are gonna like instead of just saying like we use data, like that's everybody, everyone wants to tote that. What you actually do is you say, hey, let's to build out like let's just say you charge ten thousand dollars for a website build and you could then add on two thousand or four thousand dollars for detailed measurement which is kind of those steps and things and you build yeah. the website with that in mind so we got two things do you either be better right of it's still a cost center but now you can be more efficient be better do all those things or you can add on a revenue stream of saying we build websites, we can also allow you to optimize yourself. We don't own, we, the um, website builder does not own the data. We're setting this up for you. And so that you have the ability to then either optimize with us or optimize with someone else. Right. And now you just add it on, like if it's, I don't know, probably 20, 30% to the ticket price of whatever you're building. So that's kind of the two ways. And if you are listening, you're like, oh my gosh, this sounds amazing. Uh, book a call with me, find my calendar link, wherever it is on the, on the internet. Um, and I'm happy to chat about that. So that's, that's kind of the two ways that like, I would say working with someone like us us a uh, data in general hiring someone in-house if you're going to do that that could be a possibility mm -hmm. um are all options so that was a very long-winded answer but i think that tr tried to cover all our bases no there. you you did it i mean it's and it's you know kind of your your usp it kind of is in that that discussion as well but i i'm almost thinking of, of potentially a third a, a third benefit is if i'm an agency can that also help me justify the work i'm doing for my client like, can I, can I show them, you know, this is the real data output, you know, because clients are thinking in ter terms of two things, I'm spending money. Is it working? <laughs> you know, and you're telling me that this is working, but I'm not seeing anything really coming out the back end here, you know? So that's, it's a little bit, this ethereal, let's just keep spending money and we're building momentum, you know, toward it, an eventual outcome type thing. What, what's the, is that somewhat in that space as well? Yeah, exactly. I, I think that we want to, with traffic agencies specifically, like the example you gave, is we want to try with a with a client relation. We work with a lot of agencies, both on client behalf, like we're, we're, we're contract with a client and working with the agency to make sure all their tags are set up and all of their their um, their tracking is set up for whatever they want while maintaining our the clients all reporting. So like we kind of are this intermediary person and get to see a lot of agencies and how they operate. Mm -hmm. So when you're saying like, oh, is it working or all those things, we want to try and define the purpose as granular as possible yeah. for your traffic. So when you say we have top of funnel traffic, right? Everyone is like, oh, yeah, we need top of funnel. We need top of funnel. Is it the platform that's top of funnel? Like say, for example, like a uh, broad prospecting on like a service like AdRoll or Criteo or one of those kind of third-party networks things. 
or is it like a Facebook ad where it's like a top of funnel campaign that the goal is to build the audiences for the engagement campaign, right? Mm -hmm. And the goal of that engagement campaign is to build audiences for the conversion campaign. And that conversion campaign is to drive sales. Right. So what we should do then is say, okay, what's the goal of this campaign? Let's use UTMs properly. Let's like make sure everything's tagged appropriately so we can measure the output of this individual thing and show the client of like, hey, we spent... 30% of budget on top of funnel. We generated 50,000 impressions, 5,000 like post clicks and 1,000 people showed up on your website. Those 1,000 people did absolutely nothing because they had no idea who you were, mm. what you're talking about. Unclear call to action, whatever, yeah. All these things. But then you're like, but a traffic, and look at this like conversion campaign that their goal is to retarget all people who like didn't know and your website educated them because yeah. we, we coached you through. It's like now we have a long form sales letter instead of a homepage that we're sending traffic to. And our conversion campaign is converting at 10x ROAS or wh whatever mm -hmm. it might be. And that's making up for the fact of everything else. So you want to try and get as granular as you can with what you're trying to do and coach that client um, that you're talking to, if, if you're good, right? right? As far as what those steps are and how it's working. But I only want to get granular if I can back it up. Exactly. You know, I, I, so I like operating bad. ethereally if I don't have the data to back it up. So I'm like, pretty soon we're going to start running TV ads again and be like, all right, it's going to be 20 <laughs> grand to run at uh, at 5 p.m. on channel seven. Um <laughs> Pay it or don't, that's right? right? Like that's we that's think like, fifty thousand people were watching TV at that time. <laughs> yeah, we're like hopefully next week fifty thousand people. There's no like that's earthquakes right. or anything like that that happened, right? Exactly. So, um, yeah. So that's one of the things that like being online in the digital world, like we want to be better than that, right? We want right. to be better than trying to be like, oh yeah, if you spend fifty grand, like we might something be able to do something with like. <laughs> in general and that's kind of on the one end of the spectrum of tv right and then on the other end of the spectrum it's like you could do like the kind of like pay per lead right like that's the other end of the spectrum where it's like you'll pay 20 bucks for every lead that i generate your crm yeah. Yeah. and and so you want to find that middle ground of where you operate as an agency are you on that ethereal side of like hey we're going to generate people or are you on the other side of the spectrum of like, well, you'll pay us per thing that we generate and you define the KPI. Is it leads? Is it sales? And then the risk is on someone else's shoulders. But at the same time, it's like harder to sell because you're like, is it tracked? Is it all these things? Right. So you want to find a middle ground where you operate as an agency and then put your flag in the ground right there and stick to your guns. <laughs> You, you mentioned a term a minute ago um, that, I, that I wanted to circle back with. I made a quick note that, you know, ROAS. So if I'm a client, I mean, I'm thinking maybe more in terms of like ROI, like what is just my return on any investment? Like I'm, I'm throwing money in it. What money's coming back out on the back end? Is ROAS the most important, in your opinion, is it the most important measure in the marketing space um, or are there other measures, are there other RO measures that, that kind of trump that, or, or that you need to, you need to be focused on more? What, what is the most important return that you're looking for in the marketing space, especially if I'm a, maybe a newer marketing agency owner or whatever? I think you start at, at ROAS and you start at CPA. And then as you graduate, and I think as like agencies become larger and uh, you have to go more up funnel and you're targeting yeah. and all that stuff, what you start to then look at, like my personal favorite metric, like this is like I love is cost per lead of how much it costs to get mm -hmm. a lead of any sort, any, any type, doesn't matter if it's a, a, a newsletter or a PDF or a white paper, right? And then the time to revenue of that lead. And so then you can have this like kind of cohort analysis of we're generating leads and within 90 days, these leads are on average worth 20 bucks a lead within 90 days. And now as a, like, as, as a either agency, right? Like if you're the, if you're the agency running this, if you can set this up, it's, it's like kind of complicated to like do, but you could then say after 90 days, every lead that has submitted this form is worth 
20 bucks because of your sales sequence or newsletter campaigns or whatever. That is so actionable, yeah. right? Like if you could say that, so then now you're the business owner yourself, if you're an agency doing this for yourself, if you're generating like lots of leads, or if uh, you're talking to, to an actual like uh, company that's generating leads as part of their marketing stack, you can say do enough cash flow to run 90 days, <laughs> right? Because some people don't like, it's, mm -hmm. it's honest. Like yeah. you might not have enough cash flow to, to be like, if we spend a hundred grand today and like wait 90 days and sit on our butts, right. like, we're like, okay, well, the business is not going to fulfill anything in 90 <laughs> days when this hypothetical model, like that JJ said on a podcast <laughs> uh, comes to fruition. So long answer to your ROAS question is ROAS is very good to start with. Mm -hmm. How much did you spend? How much did I think it's like cost per acquisition might be better than ROAS. Like how much did it cost you to acquire a new customer as well as a, another customer? It's like more said, specific for sure. Yeah. And then from there, like my favorite personally over a longer period of time is how many leads did we generate or even new transaction, new mm -hmm. people, right? Like the, the first, first time they're in our system. And then how much are they worth after seven days, 30 days, 90 days, right. et cetera. So you can kind of start looking at it and be like, oh, wow, like if we have enough cash in the bank, like we can actually start growing at a, a more substantial rate. Or we just sit, sit back and say, whoa, the cash flow is coming in after 90 days. Um, so it, it's, that's my favorite personally. <laughs> I, uh, I want to go back just a second to, you know, kind of our elevator pitch. You know, we jump on the elevator and went up, you know, the 10 floors and you, you kind of explain media authentic and it's, it's kind of mm -hmm. USP and, and who it's, who it's designed to, to serve. But if you, if you hear an objection from an agency owner or even a, a client that, you know, direct client that says, you know, actually all these, all these channels, these, these marketing channels, they have their own built-in analytics. Why do I need more? Why do I need anything outside? I mean, the, the answer is somewhat obvious to me, but I want to hear your, your explanation as why that's important to add outside of Google, Facebook, whatever their analytics they can provide. Oh boy, you want to start opening up a, a big can of worms now. <laughs> it's like, let's just, let's take off the gloves. Um, hey brother, there's nothing off the table here. Right? <laughs> that's right. Um, so we try to ask good questions. <laughs> yes, no, better questions is better answers. So that question is an honestly an attribution question. Is how do we want to attribute the result to the action? Mm -hmm. And if you're going to build, if you're going to look at Facebook, right? Facebook's got like a little seven day click or whatever they decide, 28 day click. It used to be 90 day click. And then Google performance max, the new kid on the block there. I think it's like a 90 day, like average are telling you. And so all those tools are kind of like good, right? Like it's like, okay, like we've got this, these tools that run traffic or do things, but we wanted to find what is success like for us because it's going to change for all these platforms. I can make a new platform called jjsads.com yeah. and it'll be like, I'm gonna do a 14 day last touch attribution with a 90 day impression. And like, you're not gonna just go follow this new ad platform that just made up an attribution window. <laughs> And so what you want to do, like the benefit, and again, this is longer than a sales pitch. So I apologize. My, we're going to the hundredth floor on this elevator mm -hmm. is let's define it on a way that we can measure it and stick to that. And so then we judge that traffic channel off of it. And the, the, everyone's like, oh, but we need 90 days for like this touch point to work. Right. And at the end of the day, it was like, we want action to take. And so the, the example that I can give the most is like either if you're trying to get a six pack and you work out today and then you wait 90 days and say like, where's my six pack? You're, you're like, wait, I, 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 nothing happened. <laughs> like I worked out on, <laughs> I worked out on January 1st and now it's <laughs> April. Right. And I didn't like, do anything in between. Yeah. Like, Where did my six pack come from? <laughs> um, and so it's much more actionable to use a more direct response, last click attribution and tell the result of what it's supposed to do. So for mm. example, if I'm going to work out day one, I'm like, my goal is to walk five miles. That's what I'm going to measure success by. Like that's success, 
for I didn't lose. I don't have a six pack. Sorry. And then on second, it's like my goal is to walk 6.5 miles. Mm -hmm. yeah. And on the third, my goal is to do something like, again, you kind of progressively change your goal. And then on day 89, you're like, my goal is to do a thousand push ups and a thousand sit ups and all these things. And so, but this very like, the attribution question can be very complicated, but what we want to do is want to see what can we define and what can we change? Because if we run an ad today and we say, oh, 90 days, it's going to happen. Very difficult to get an action out of, of like, let's do more or less. You're like, hold on guys, let's, let's wait around for 90 days. My app is forming. Um, <laughs> and so that's, that's, that's kind of like how I would say that like the benefit of look, looking at this kind of model from a thing that you own you know like the back of your hand of like what we're doing what we're trying to do how the traffic sources play into things and that's that's where things really can start uh you can start putting gas on whatever fire you're trying to grow whether it's your own agency whether it's someone else's business and if you can get them the hardest part honestly is coaching the client about like how that is different than how everyone else is trying to promise you 30x ROAS yeah. on like because honestly that's what you're doing is if I could say we're going to have a like a 20 X row as on the day one, if I do that model of like, if you work out today and then like, if we run ads today and anybody who ever saw this ad that we put up in the next, we're going to attribute all the revenue back to this ad. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. there's your 30 X row as problem solved, like yeah. lots of money. Yeah. That, that, uh, that, that is a, as a great example that you gave. And I, I think I'd, I'd written some notes down about, you know, on the other chat you had done on another podcast that you you asked the questions like, what happened and how did it happen? You know, it's really mm -hmm. a causation, you know, question. And, and I think you you covered that very clearly with kind of the whole attribution mindset. I, before we kind of shift into our final segment here, which is, you know, my, my favorite part of the, of the chat is because it really kind of sometimes catches people off guard, but with our rapid fire round, but I, I just have one question that I, I and this is, you know, Take a second to, you know, you can look up and kind of let the, let the gears spin. But what is the, in your opinion, what is one question that, that the marketing industry has not yet solved? One question, the marketing industry. That if you crack that nut, it would just, it would make things so much easier for all of us in this space. I, I think the the biggest piece is of if marketing, the marketing industry as a whole could solve is how we want to define attribution and success. And that's if, if, if and I say solve very loosely, but if we could all define it, that there was some master, uh, master marketer, um, what's it called? Like a, a realtor, like, you know, how realtors have like their little agencies of like yeah. compliance and everything. There's a market. Yeah. Right. There's a marketer standard. Like <laughs> everyone uses this thing. If we could just define that at one way so that everybody played on the same playing field, as opposed to like toting, because I think everybody like from the agency side of things, like you get like either imposter syndrome or like you think that like, oh man, how is this other big agency that has a podcast getting 12X ROAS and generating $30,000 um, in sales off of $5 in ad spend? And honestly, they're probably just changing the attribution model to be the most open mm -hmm. it possibly could yeah. be. And so if we could define that, I think it would solve a lot of like the BS that comes out and also make people that are actually potentially really good marketers like rise to the top as they see this is my goal is move this number um and we stop changing the definition of it that the i that is really really interesting that 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 is uh i mean i i actually thought you may head in a different direction and say yeah if we could really solve the whole idea about what makes people do things you know if we're what you get into the mindset that but you're you're exactly right i mean if you if you could consistently measure against each other you know like we have consistent rules of the game and rules of comparison that i think that would that'd be a huge a huge win for sure but we're going to shift into the uh, rapid fire round. So rapid questions and really quick answers. First thing that comes to mind, just, just pop it off there. Oh boy, know, I'm ready. Short and sweet. So, um, and there's a reason that, that these questions, they're going to, you're going to think these are such crazy disparate questions. You're right. But there's a, there's a method to the madness here. 
did you get along with your parents growing up? Uh, more or less. More yes. or less. You know, that is the standard answer. It's like, well, I can remember times I didn't, but yeah, for the most part. <laughs> like how much rosy retrospect is in, in, involved in my memory? Now. Exactly. That's right. That's right. Did you have siblings? No, only child. Only child. Did you have a pet growing up? Had a couple of cats, but I'd say that my mom's not mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any kids? No. When do you wake up every day? About 6 a.m. It's about the time <laughs> you woke up for this this chat. And what time do you go to bed at night? Uh, 11. 11, all right. Where is your ideal vacation spot, money not being an object? Um, I think it's more about the activity of like either mountain biking, kite surfing, or something along those lines. Um, I want to go to Portugal. Haven't been. Um, so I, I don't know if I can say the ideal. I grew up in Hawaii, so mm. it kind of is like, it kind of taints my, uh, I was going to say, uh, where do you go it, from there? <laughs> it kind of taints, taints my vacation thing of, I can't say Hawaii because I spent like the first 18 years of my life there. So <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, so tell me how does faith integrate into business for you? I'd say you have to have like in in the general sense of the word faith of like in yourself of like if if you believe that you really are good at what you're doing that's kind of how i'd say like if that's the kind of faith that we're talking about of like okay there's do you believe that like you can be better tomorrow like that's the that's the core of it right is like you have to be better tomorrow than you are today and everybody is not the best that they've ever been or the best they ever will be and so that's like not a non non religious take, but I think that at the end of the day is what defines like entrepreneurs, agencies, et cetera, is the the faith in yourself that you can be better tomorrow. And if you lose that faith in yourself of being better tomorrow, like it's very hard to like sell the dream to your team, sell the dream to everybody else that you're going to be somewhere better tomorrow that everyone wants to be a part of. And that was a very long answer for this rapid fire. Round. <laughs> What's one thing you would change about the current business climate if you could change it? Everyone's everyone stopped using these attribution models of like 30,000% returns. Um, it's just irritating. And also people uh, saying that GA4 is the, the solution to the world's problems and that you should just use it right now because there's some things that you can't do yet. Um, Yes. <laughs> JJ, what a what a great chat today, man. I appreciate you taking the time and, and rolling out at, at your normal wake up time <laughs> and jumping right on the podcast. You know, no coffee even in between, probably. But man, thanks for just taking time to, to share with us and and really just painting such a great picture of this this whole idea of of uh you know the the just the data, you know, good information leads to good decisions you know, that you make on the back end. And without that data, you're just kind of shooting in the dark. And, and, uh, you know, that's the, that's the worst thing to do in this business climate today is, is to not have good information, especially in a real time sense and effective asking good questions for, for good output. And I just really appreciate you taking the time with just sharing with, with agency owners and, and a broader audience than that, but really just thank you for coming on the marketing umbrella podcast. It's great to have you JJ, have a great weekend. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Thank you for tuning in to another great episode of the Marketing Umbrella Podcast, where we provide the information you need from successful leading marketers to build and grow your digital marketing agency. To learn more, go to UmbrellaUS.com.